Well, this is it. Final garden tour at this house. Um, I am kind of at a loss for words. I think this would have been a different video had I not spent the last week, almost every day, moving, packing, cleaning, fixing. I'm just, I'm worn out. And so I'm sorry if this video doesn't come with a happy, peppy, excited, or even thoughtful host. <laughs> uh, I think, I think with all of the craziness that's been going on around the move and the scheduling of, you know, photo shoots for the book and going back and forth to San Diego and cleaning up the mess that the moving company made. This, this would have been, I don't know, probably would have been harder in some ways because I'm just too tired to be emotional about it. We haven't pulled away for the last time yet. I'm sure at that point, yeah, I will be. But as I sit here and I look around and I just remember, oh, now I'm gonna lose it. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I guess emotions can come when you're tired. Um, when we moved in here, there was nothing. There was, where I'm sitting right now, this was um, an old shed. It probably was here since 1962. And it was kind of two-sided brick, glass on one side. There were two palm trees here. And there was a big cement slab, which we had until last year. Now it's covered in decomposed granite. There was a couple of my old my grandma's tomato plants that were out there that were kind of dead. Two orange trees, big lawn with a two foot flower bed that ran around the lawn that had, I think, three shrubs shaped into cubes. And that's pretty much it. The big juniper and the philodendron, of course. That, that's it. And I was so excited to just have this new start and a place to garden. At our last place, the, the soil was so sandy. We were right on the, near the beach and you could hardly grow anything but weeds. And I set to work. Noah was only three and a half at that time. And he was out here with me every day. Where him and Emily would sit on the patio and watch me dig the hole for the pond and, and he called it the daddy show. We're going to watch the daddy show. And a lot of you know that even though this was, that was my fresh start in this house, it was not my start in this house. My start in this house was at birth. My grandparents owned this house since 1962 or 3. They weren't the original owners, but I think within a year or two of, of the house being built, they moved in. And I have pictures of me out here. I have pictures of me under the tree and I wasn't even, I was, my birthday's in September and it was Christmas and I was in the house under the tree in my little baby seat. I have pictures of me out playing in this backyard. In fact, in the background of those pictures, you can see they had a couple a orchard, like a couple fruit trees over here that I didn't even know about. You can probably see the top palm trees and, and the shed in the background. So even before we moved in here, this house had a lot of meaning. Uh, like I've said before, this will be my first Christmas not in this house in 46 years. But when it became ours to tend, I really, I put everything I had into it because it was a hard time in life for my business, for just things for personally in general. And this was my outlet. This was my, my sanctuary. It is not a stretch to say that I spent more time outside here than inside. I mean, that's for sure. And then last January, 
when I had my aneurysm diagnosis, it became my solace. I needed to be out here for peace, for prayer, just to keep, to have something to hope for. Because at that time, it didn't look so good. And then just two months after that, COVID hit, lockdowns, all of that. And this really became our, our haven from the outside world, right? And, and it's hard to say this, but COVID and being at home, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me. I was used to being here. I wanted to be here. I had plenty to keep me busy. And so it took on a whole nother meaning, you know, as a sanctuary. You know, after, and then when COVID hit, so many of you came on board to this channel and we met that way. We, we met through this garden. I grew a whole new life through this garden. I grew a business. I grew as a gardener in teaching gardening. I learned so much, not only from doing research for videos, but from you guys. This channel, because of this garden, helped me to appreciate myself. It helped me to see that I had worth, more worth than I gave myself credit for. That I could help people, teach people, inspire people. It gave me self-confidence that I was lacking. And that all happened here. And without this garden, I don't even know where I'd be. It has helped me through some rough times, but when the time came and we realized that I had done everything I could do here without tearing it all out and starting over, I had done everything I could do. I have, I have filled every last spot here. It was a different, difficult decision to think about leaving this. And ultimately, if we hadn't gone down to San Diego County when my sister moved in, I'm not sure I would have had to push because I would, I, I, looking around here at houses that had more land, I couldn't afford it. And there's no way. Um, but down there, it opened up a possibility. And when I saw what an acre looked like, or an acre, an acre and a half as we ended up with, it just, it lit this fire of excitement and hope and promise that something I could really, I could take what I did here on the, the small scale and just blow it wide open. And the, 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 the concentration on that is what gave me the ability to see past the sadness of leaving here. And so when we found the property house that we're living in now, um, the sadness of leaving here became a side note rather than just so overwhelming that it would stop me from doing anything. So we took the plunge, we got it. And now that we've been living back and forth and I feel like I'm cheating on my house when I sit this house, when I say this, but it feels like home there now. It really does. And coming back here, it feels like home, but it feels like we're just visitors here now. And technically as of yesterday morning, I am a visitor here. We no longer own this house as of yesterday morning. It was recorded uh, under the new owners. And I have to say that we had the final walkthrough two nights ago with the new owners. And my dad was here, who used to live in this house. 
and he got to meet them and their whole family was here uncles and just everybody and he saw what I saw the first time I met them and that they are perfect they're perfect for this house I can't imagine a better family to take over this house seeing how close-knit they are and the way they talked about it and the way they acknowledged that this house was family since 1963 to whatever it was this house was my family and that their plan is that this is a long-term hub for their family and so I just know that it will be taken care of when I'm gone so anyway enough of all this this is our last day here and I've got lots to do we're almost completely moved out we've got a little more to pack in the trailer from the garage not too much and then getting all the plants that I'm taking taking cuttings digging up some plants um, that'll all happen in the next few hours and then we're supposed to be uh, and then this evening is our final photo shoot just some last things for the book including my portrait probably not the best day for that but uh, we're going with it so this is our last chance to do the final garden tour and I gotta say, it's probably not going to be all that impressive. <laughs> Way to sell it, Brian. I just haven't, we were gone for the last week, over a week. And, you know, it's been hit or miss and in and out in the past two months, really. And so, and I started last night digging out some plants. So, you're going to see a mess. But I had to do a last walkthrough. I just had to. If not for you, for me. Um... So let's just go do that. So it is a mess right now. I am taking out plants that I want to save or to take with me. This Hadikium ginger right here um, I got for my birthday last year. And I have not yet had it to bloom. And so taking that with me. I cut down a red banana. And I'm taking that with me, and I'm going to show you guys how to propagate. If you're growing red banana, like that one right there, it does not make seeds, and it does not put on pups like other bananas. So there's a special way to do it to get them to uh, multiply and to propagate. My Monstera deliciosas are all laying here. This is actually the one that fruited that I did a video on. So it's got a good root system. Big thick trunk. I wanted to take this full plumeria, but it just digging down between the lava rock, it was too difficult. So I pulled off a big chunk, um, and I'll that'll that'll those root really easily. These cymbidium orchids, they were here in these holes, planted the whole pot in the ground for drainage. One of these was my grandmother's, and so I'll definitely want to take that, but taking both of them. Bob the Tiki guy is gone. I got him out of there last night. But as you can see with the tropicals, they're at their zenith right now. Pond needs to be topped off. I gotta take cuttings of this Brugmansia here. And here we are around the pond. I don't have the waterfall and the stream going right now because uh, I'm top I'm fixing one of the filters. I want to try and get one of these philodendrons that is, is a, a sh 
offshoot of the main philodendron that's been here since 1962. So I'm going to find what, whatever the smallest one is and see if I can't get that out of the ground. White ginger is going to bloom and I'm going to miss it. I'm going to take some with me though. I'm taking the things with me that, again, have sentimental value or they take a long time to grow. Like this tea plant here. I got this on my first trip to Hawaii back in 2000. So that's coming with me. Okay, so now for the vegetable garden. Let's get a long view here. The um, wash tubs that I plant in, those have been packed. This basil is blooming, so the bees will love that. This is called Chocolate Cosmos. I love that color. Got lots of zinnias. These zinnias over here... I just saw when we came back a couple days ago, they'd all bloomed in all these different colors. Very happy colors. This big king to big peak, I don't even know what it's called. It's a the kind of um, sweetie drop, the sweetie drop peppers. This is a really beautiful plant. It's got some little peppers on it. I'm gonna be digging that up and taking it with me. My sweet potatoes. We've got sweet potatoes. See? But they're not ready to harvest yet, so hopefully the new owner likes sweet potatoes. Cucumbers are a bit diseased. That's what happens when you're not around to look after things. And of course, powdery mildew. That definitely happens this time of year when you're not around to look after things. Parsley, more cosmos, yarrow. Look at that pretty white cosmos. Lots of carrots. These cucumbers are going crazy. Look at this. Nice. Finally caught one before it went over. But look at the tomatoes. Let me get around the other side. First of all, my sun gold, we just picked a bunch yesterday. They're so delicious. Thank you guys so much for recommending them. I will never be without them. But just look at these tomatoes. Look at this one. This is huge. Huge. So on this side you can see it doesn't look that great. <laughs> I did not realize, because of all the back and forth, that this bed was not getting water, or as much water, because the, 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 the hose that comes from back there was kind of kinked in a couple places along here, so it wasn't getting the water that it needed. I did get lots of pumpkins, so those are ready to harvest. I'm going to pick those before we leave. So the edible landscape. The lavender here is, there's some couple of dead pieces, but it's putting out a lot of new growth in the back. So I'm not worried about that. Um, this, this, the roses have absolutely gone crazy. A little bit too crazy, and I have not been here to 
get them under control. As you can see in the back, the artichokes are growing really well. You can't see back there because it's too thick. Um, look at these eggplant. And we've actually got eggplant on them. Look at this. There was kale in the back and it's still back there. You just can't see it. But overall though, if you stand back and look at this, ultimately I think it was a success. Nobody's gonna know there's food in there, right? So we'll head out around the front. Don't mind the lawn, it has not been mowed. These beds, the hydrangeas are kind of going over now. I'm gonna be grabbing some cuttings of those before we leave today. And there's some really nice uh, new growth right here that will make great cuttings. These two fuchsias, I'm gonna be grabbing some cuttings of these as well because these actually, these actually have special meaning. When I was on a field trip with Noah, there's a, a historic landmark in our county called the Olivas Adobe. And it has a huge old fuchsia out front. And it, I'm gonna have to get the exact, I can't remember the exact uh, numbers, but well over a hundred years old. And in fact, it had a plaque from, I think it was the British or the Royal Fuchsia Society or something like that. And it said that it was the oldest blooming fuchsia in the world or something to that effect. And so I, when the tour moved on from that area, I snuck back like any decent gardener and found a water bottle in my backpack, snapped off some cuttings, stuck them in the water bottle, made it home, they rooted successfully, and now I have the oldest living, blooming fuchsia in the world. Well, that's it. I don't really have much more to show. I know from some of the comments that this is kind of sad for some of you too, which is just amazing to me that, you know, People who've never been here could have gotten joy and inspiration from this humble little piece of land. It's just, it's just, I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you for being on this journey. This is not goodbye for this channel and for us, you know, and that's really what matters. Family, friends, houses can come and go in life, gardens can come and go, although my next garden, I'm really hoping that's it. <laughs> because after I put a lot of work into something that big, I hope you will continue to be here. I know I will. And I thank all of you for following all of the ups and downs. Thank you for following. You know, if you've been with me a long time, you know, right here in this gazebo, I had my 100,000 subscriber moment and just my 1,000 subscriber moment. But this house, this garden, has meant so much to me. You guys mean so much to me. And this channel will live on until people aren't watching it anymore or until I'm physically unable to do it. Um, but I am excited about the new direction for this channel. I'm excited about the you know new channel, Next Level Homestead put a link down below to that. If you haven't joined me, that's where a lot of the stuff now is going to be happening. Things like this, things that are more personal, things that are more in depth of things we're doing on, on this channel will be on that channel and just so much more of a wide range of topics related to gardening, homesteading, cooking, animal care, all kinds of stuff is going to be on that channel. But this channel is where you'll still be coming for good old fashioned, you know, A to Z, how to grow this, ways to handle that. That's this channel. Thanks for being along on the ride. Thanks for allowing me to just pour out what I'm thinking because sometimes some of this is done for you and sometimes some of this is done for me and my family and something to look back on. That's kind of what this video was. So, for the last time from this garden, I'll see you next time.